Hi, welcome to Storytime with Gigi. Today we're going to be reading America, a Patriotic Primer by Lynn Cheney. This is a wonderful book. I know you're going to enjoy it. I'm not going to read all this, but I encourage you to get your own copy. A is for America, the land that we love. There's a quote here by Emma Lazarus. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Oh, beautiful per, for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. B is for birthday of this nation of ours. On America's birthday, there ought to be pomp and parade, John Adams, our second president, wrote to his wife, Abigail, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other from this time forward forevermore. Now you know why we have fireworks on 4th of July, which is the birthday for our country. I love a wonderful 4th of July celebration. C is for the Constitution that binds us together. The Constitution has been the framework for our government for more than 200 years. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. That is the preamble that was written for the Constitution. The happy union of these states is a wonder, their Constitution a miracle, their example the hope of liberty throughout the world. James Madison. And the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights are kept in the National Archives building in Washington, D.C. today. And that's the National Archives. There's the Capitol. Supreme Court. I've been to Washington, D.C. It's wonderful. D is for the declaration that proclaimed we were free. The Declaration of Independence adopted on July the 4th, 1776 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, declared us to be a free and independent nation. And then a quote here from Thomas Paine. We have it in our power to begin the world over again. John Hancock was the first to sign the declaration. He wrote his name large because some say he wanted to be sure the King of England could read it without his spectacles. <laughs> and there are some words written all around the side of the page. This is a wonderful book. I think every home should have one. E is for equality. The Declaration of Independence established the principle that all are created equal and have God-given rights to live, to be free, and to pursue happiness. Over the years, more and more of us have been able to enjoy these rights equally. F is for freedom and the flag that we fly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I remember saying that every day when I went to school as a child. Now up here across the border is a history of our flag, Adopted on June 14th, 1777, we just celebrated Flag Day, 
The first flag of the United States of America had 13 stripes and 13 stars representing the 13 colonies. And they go through a variety. Our flag today has 50 stars representing our 50 states and 13 stripes reminding us of the first 13 colonies. So there's the first and there's our current flag. And this is just different facts, what you're supposed to do. Flag flown at half mast indicates morning. Talking about how to fold the flag. Very good. Interesting information. G is for God in whom we trust. Freedom to worship as they chose brought people to America. Freedom to worship as we choose sustains our country today. This talks about the pilgrims who had come, who had sailed to America in 1620 in search of freedom to worship God in their own way. After they had crossed the vast and stormy ocean, they drew up a plan for governing themselves called the Mayflower Compact. Their first winter was very hard, but in the spring, Native Americans of the Wampanoag tribe taught them how to grow corn and catch fish. After a successful harvest, the pilgrims invited the Wampanoag to join in a feast. Today, we think of their celebration as the first Thanksgiving. God bless America, and he has. H is for heroes and I for ideals. Heroes remind us of our nation's ideals and how important it is to live up to them. Some heroes we admire from afar. Others are part of our lives every day. Pioneers, firefighters, the United States military, police, teachers, elected leaders, doctors and nurses and astronauts. And here you can see many different Harriet Tubman, Chief Joseph, Jackie Robinson, Clara Barton, Nathan Hale, Jane Adams, Frederick Douglass, Eleanor Roosevelt, John Adams, Abigail Adams, Franklin Roosevelt, and Sam Houston some of many heroes we have. J is for Jefferson. In 1776, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. He was the first Secretary of State and second Vice President and our third President. One of his most famous quotes is, I cannot live without books, and I definitely understand that. Lots of words written here. He lives in the Charlottesville area. That's where his home, Monticello, is. I've been there a couple of times, and I love it. He invented many things, including a plow and this copying machine. The Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom was written by Jefferson. It was a forerunner of the First Amendment. Thomas Jefferson. K is for King. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. fought for justice with prayers, peaceful marches, and some of the most powerful words our nation has ever heard. Let justice roll down like waters. A line from his one of his most famous speeches, the I Have a Dream speech. I have a dream 
that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Thousands of people led by Dr. King marched from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama in March 1965. They helped convince Congress to pass a law ensuring that African Americans could vote. After being jailed for a peaceful protest, Dr. King wrote Letter from Birmingham Jail, in which he declared injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And because he fought violence with peaceful protests, Dr. King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He was only 35 years old. One of our heroes. L is for Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, guided our nation during the Civil War. He was determined that we would continue to be a single nation. I happen temporarily to occupy this big white house. I am a living witness that any one of your children may look to come here as my father's child has. He's saying anybody could aspire to be the president. Lincoln's children, Tad and Willie, were the first presidential children to live in in the White House. And here are some facts about Lincoln. He was born in a log cabin and grew up to be known as Honest Abe. When Lincoln was elected president, southern states left the Union and the Civil War broke out. In 1863, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation freeing enslaved African Americans in the Confederacy. The Union won the war, but on April 14, 1865, Lincoln was killed. A funeral train took him home to Illinois. Americans will remember him always as a great man and a great president. Abraham Lincoln. M is for Madison. James Madison, our fourth president, was so important when our nation was getting started that he is called the father of the Constitution. He was primarily responsible for the Bill of Rights. And I'll read this quote here. The advice nearest to my heart is that the union of the states be cherished and perpetuated. James Madison's wife, Dolly, was gracious and brave during the War of 1812, she gathered up important documents and a painting of George Washington before she fled the advancing British who had set fire to the White House. That picture of George Washington still hangs in the White House today. It says here that Madison studied governments of other times and places to get ideas about how our own should be formed. Madison was one of the authors of the Federalist Papers, essays that helped convince the states to accept the Constitution. So there's lots of things. N is for Native Americans who came here first. It's quite a few. Pocahontas daughter of Powhatan, helped the colonists at Jamestown. Sequoia, a Cherokee, created an alphabet for his people. Tecumseh, a Shawnee leader with his brother, the prophet, organized Native American nations into a confederation. Sacagawea, A Shoshone woman guided and translated for Lewis and Clark as they explored the West. Ben Nighthorse Campbell, one of 44 chiefs of the Northern Cheyenne tribe, is a U.S. Senator from Colorado. Maria Tallchief of the Osage tribe became a prima ballerina. 
Navajo code talkers, World War II Marines, used their native language to send coded messages. The Japanese never deciphered their transmissions. And Jim Thorpe of Sac and Fox Heritage was one of the greatest athletes of the 20th century. O is for the oath new Americans take. I hereby declare on oath that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. That's from the Oath of Citizenship. According to one estimate, more than 40% of Americans living today have an ancestor who passed through Ellis Island, the entry point to America for millions of immigrants. Ellis Island is in New York Harbor, very close to the Statue of Liberty. P is for patriotism that fills our hearts with pride. Our obligations to our country never cease, but with our lives. John Adams. I love the parades. I love the red, white, and blue. I love my country. Q is for America's quest for the new, the far, and the very best. Here are some examples of people who have done extraordinary things. Americans. Emily Dickinson was a brown breaking, breaking poet. Babe Ruth was a baseball legend. Martha Graham was a modern dance innovator. I. M. Pei, a world-renowned architect. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, motion picture projector, and phonograph. We choose to go to the moon and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. John F. Kennedy. Benjamin Franklin, inventor, scientist, and statesman. Orville and Wilbur Wright, first successful powered flight. Althea Gibson, tennis champion. Louis Armstrong, jazz trumpeter, singer, and band leader. Our history is filled with Americans who have always done excellent, pursued excellence in whatever it is they did. R is for the rights we are guaranteed. Our basic rights are set forth in the Constitution and its amendments. The first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights. First, we have the freedom of speech. We can say whatever we want, even if we disagree with somebody. We have the freedom of the press. That means that our press can report on everything. Freedom of religion. We can worship God the way we want to worship God. Not be told you can't worship that way. You have to worship this way. We can worship God however we want. Freedom of assembly. That means we can come together and protest if we don't agree with something, doing it peacefully. The right to keep and bear arms. That means we're allowed to own guns. The right to trial by judge. That means we get our case heard. Someone can't just throw us in jail without us having our, our day in court. And the right to vote. S is for suffrage. In 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York, women began the long struggle for suffrage or the right to vote. In 1920, their voting rights were recognized all across the nation. 
Believe it or not, women were not allowed to vote for a long time, and these women did not think that was right. Lucretia Mott, Lucy Stone, Alice Paul, Susan B. Anthony, you might recognize her name, she's on the dollar coin, Elizabeth Caddy Stanton, Esther Hobart Morris, Amelia Bloomer, Carrie Chapman Catt, and Sojourner Truth. These women went to jail. Some of them even died in their efforts, and women achieved the right to vote. Last year was the, 2020 was the 100th anniversary of that. T is for tolerance. Free to think and believe and pursue happiness in our own way, we recognize the right of others to do the same. U is for United States. Our country is big. Our people come from every part of the world. But different as we are, we are all part of a single nation, the United States of America. This is a nice flag. Let me see if I can capture all of this. This is where I live in the state of Virginia. Where do you live? Although I was born in California. And all along the border, it shows the different things that Americans celebrate and observe. King Kamehameha Day in Hawaii. German Oktoberfest, Bastille Day, Rosh Hashanah, Native American Pow Wow, Christmas, Day of the Dead, Cinco de Mayo, St. Lucia's Day, Ramadan, Chinese New Year, St. Patrick's Day, Kwanzaa, Easter, Veterans Day, Mardi Gras, Hanukkah, Valentine's Day, Feast of San Gennaro, Trung Thru, that's Vietnamese Lunar Festival, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Pulaski Day, Labor Day, Mormon Pioneer Day. A lot, and there's a lot more than just those. V is for the valor shown by those who've kept us free. These are awards, Navy Cross, the Silver Star, and the Medal of Honor. Alice C. York received the Medal of Honor in World War I. Audie Murphy, World War II, he is the most decorated um, soldier. And these are just different. Molly Pitcher, one of the first American women to fight for freedom. Courageous World War II Marines helped win the war in the Pacific. The 40, uh, 442nd Regimental Combat Team, a Japanese-American unit that became one of the most decorated in military history. Brave Americans fought in the jungles of Vietnam. American sailors won the Battle of Midway and turned the course of World War II. And the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, an African-American unit that fought with great valor in the Civil War. And in World War II, a brave paratroopers parachuted behind enemy lines. It was a serious war. All of them are. W is for Washington. George Washington, our first president, is called the father of our country, Brave in battle and dignified always, he was celebrated as the man who unites all hearts. And he is quoted as saying, I walk on untrodden ground. That means nobody had ever done what he had done. Washington loved his home at Mount Vernon, Virginia, but left it when his country needed him in 1797. After he had been president for two terms, he returned home to stay. I have been to Mount Vernon. 
and it still looks exactly this way. I think he's the only one ever unanimously elected president. He took the oath of office on 1789 in New York City, the nation's temporary capital. He presided over the Continental Con Convention, bringing the great esteem his fellow citizens had for him to the effort to create a workable government. He was tall, dignified. He led the revolutionary forces that defeated a much stronger foe. God's hand was on his life. X marks the spot. Different places that are important in our history. Plymouth, Massachusetts, where the pilgrims landed. Lexington and Concord, where the Revolutionary War began. Yorktown, Virginia, where the Revolutionary War ended. I've been there too. It's not far from me. Washington, D.C., where our nation's capital has been for more than 200 years. New York City, New York, where George Washington became our first president. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were signed. Why is for you and all you will be in this greatest of countries, the land of the free? The noblest question in the world is, what good may I do in it? Benjamin Franklin. You can be anything you want to be in this country. Z is the end of the alphabet, but not of America's story. Strong and free, you will continue to be an inspiration to the world. I know that for America, there will always be a bright dawn ahead. President Ronald Reagan. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. And that's our story. I hope you liked it. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends and see if you can find a copy of this book for your home. You would love it. Thank you for spending a little time with me today. Bye until next time.